Hey, what's All right. going on? Hey, what's going on, everyone? Uh, sorry for the delay, having some technical difficulties. Um, I'm an old man trying to Twitch stream, so yeah. Uh, apologize for that. Um, so you might see me. This is real informal. Um, so let me do my setup here. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Uh, first of all, I'm Leo from Trust a Sec, and I'll be talking about our instant response training upcoming. And also, uh, don't mind the background. Um, you know, it's a mad scientist lab in here, so I'm doing a lot of uh, keyboard building, uh, remodeling, or uh, you know, just plain messy, right? Um, people that work have messy workspaces. No, I'm just kidding. Um, let's see here. All right, let's get my slides going. If I can find them, right? Oh. All righty. Here we go. All right, y'all. We got the twist going. We should be good to go. All right. That's not right. <laughs> All right, this is uh, Dave Kenny, our fearless leader, right? And today we'll be talking about instant response. It, it says straight honey on here. Ignore that. Uh, I apologize. Um, it's supposed to be instant response intro to window forensics. We have an upcoming training. I'm Leo Bastidas. Uh, you guys might know me as CyberGoat couple things. Um, I'm a senior IR consultant for Trust Sec. Uh, work on incident response team with under Tyler Hudak, uh, our fearless leader, and then Dave Kennedy, uh, you know, he, he's our fearless CEO. Um, I come from the DOD space, right? Uh, I'm a cyber ranger, uh, PowerPoint ranger, whatever you want to call me. Uh, did 13 years, and I love 98% of it. There's that 2% that sucks, right? Um, but I seem to forget that. My wife likes to remind me, though. So she likes to remind me. Remember that time she used to hate the military? I'm like, no, nah, I don't remember that. Um, from Los Angeles, born and raised, but currently reside in Austin. I have a bunch of certs. But uh, don't tell my boss this, but do, do the certs really matter? Uh, some people say yes. Some people say no. My personal opinion, Leo's opinion, uh, I think they're a good uh, gateway into the industry. I don't think they're the end-all, be-all, right? It's all about the knowledge. All right, cool. Um, something interesting about me, something personal. I like to build my own keyboards uh, from scratch, uh, and I like to do my own firmware. I like I like to solder my own keyboard, you know, source the parts. I used to source them from overseas. Now I'm trying to get them stateside. You know, you can get them um, any electronic shop, any distributor, right? Okay, cool. So let's talk about our upcoming training. Uh, we have an incident response uh, intro to Windows Forensics. Um, so that could be equivalent to say an uh, introduction, uh, say some governing body or a, a famous security certification body that it costs a lot of money, right? We do equivalent of intro to Windows Forensics uh, from members of our team. And here it is. Well, we have our upcoming training at the Virtual uh, Summit 2020. Uh, ISS is coming up in October, right? Uh, the Virtual uh, Summit 2020. Uh, we're doing this from October 28 to, to 30. There's just still time to sign up. Um, and each uh, member of the IR team will, given, will be given a block of instructions to the class. Uh, there's some hands-on demo, hands-on labs. And it's, it's, uh, it's, it's affordable. You know, if a company wants you to do some incident response training, some Windows forensic training, it's very affordable to the point where I'm not going to say you can pay out of pocket, but you can definitely uh, save up one month salary and put 20% of that into training. You can pay out of pocket if you do that. Okay, cool. All right.
Alrighty. And let's see here. So intro to window forensics. So what are we going to be talking about in our upcoming training? And I'm going to dive in and give a, a little example of my block of, uh, block of instruction in which I'll be doing the file system analysis. And if we have time, I'll go over browser forensics. Um, but during the class, and as the training as a whole, we'll be doing file system analysis. We'll be doing browser forensics, registry analysis, event log analysis, memory analysis, and malware analysis. And let, let me em emphasize that we're an instant response team. We're not a, a traditional digital forensics, uh, dead box forensics team. Even though we do have that capability, we're all about uh, time management, getting the answer as quick as possible. We're not going to spend two days on a disk image. We're trying to give you answers, or we're trying to get answers to a question within four hours if we can. You know, four hours, three hours, as quick as possible, as efficient as possible. That That's the main difference for us. We're instant responders. Uh, we're not traditional, you know, like the cops or law enforcement. They do real traditional, take their time. That's not us. We're the opposite, but they do overlap a lot. Okay, cool. Let's see here. Um, let's see. So, when a f uh, forensic investigation, right? Um, what what is a forensic investigation? Well, you know my my source definition here comes from the the highly advanced uh, Wikipedia, and their definition is <laughs> computer forensics, also known as computer forensic science, is a branch of digital forensics science pertaining to evidence found on the computer and data storage media. Uh, the goal of computer forensics is to examine um, the digital media. Whatever that is, it could be uh, an endpoint, it could be a hard drive, it could be a CD, it, it could be any type of digital media, right? Um, in the forensic sound matter, and to, in order to identify, uh, preserve, recover, uh, and present facts, we're not about opinions. We do, uh, you know, we don't want to give like a, an analyst opinion. We just want to state facts. So that's what a forensic investigation is. We want to state facts. Uh, you know, is this true? Is this false? Was this present? Was this available? And then if you do have an opinion or analysis, uh, analysis, you, you write that on, on the, in parallel on the side of. But it doesn't uh, impede a, a forensic investigation because we're all just about facts. We don't want to make judgments. Um, a case a use case could be uh, a user is doing something malicious. Everybody thinks an insider threat, you know, he might have got hacked. So it's not us to judge or or to be the jury. We just want to present facts to whoever wants to answer that question, right? Okay, cool. So the, the type of forensic investigations uh, or forensic artifacts at the system level, right? Um, you can do, um, you can capture or identify initial compromise alerts. Uh, indicators and emails, right? Uh, you can you can you can retrieve artifacts or evidence from from a RAM image. Uh, a lot of a lot of tools out there for triage data. Uh, there's you know there's Cape. There's uh, was it Quick IR or uh, um, Quick Triage? And there's a bunch of triage tools, and all they're doing is gathering the the important artifacts in order to make that uh, determination to either do we need to take a deeper dive, can we answer any questions to key leaders in a short amount of time. Um, so there's certain artifacts you can gather and capture that will help you and key leaders make decisions on what to do next. Um, we can paint a pretty good picture with triage data. Triage data, I'll go into that in a little bit. Um, you can also get artifacts or observables uh, evidence you can get that from a disk image or a disk clone, right? That's the old school way, but also takes a lot of time. Um, not only because it, it takes into consideration the space of the disk, um, also processing that information because you're getting the whole complete disk image, and that can be what in the terabytes these days. So, also network information. There's don't forget about the network uh, evidence they can capture. Uh, you know, the firewalls, uh, cross-segment traffic, and then something that's becoming real popular these days, 
uh, audio logs and old 365. It's what we're seeing a lot. Everybody using Office 365, and there is specific evidence that you can use for a file use of knowledge or for your investigation using audit logs for Office 365. Uh, let me see. Cool. So when we talk about uh, forensic evidence, there's uh, order of volatility. And what does that mean? That means there's evidence and artifacts that you want to capture first before other evidence because they could be possibly deleted or wiped and, uh, from a reboot, you know, j just a user rebooting or, or you know, uh, it can be a log retention issue. It could be some kind of retention issue where every day it just flushes the, uh, flushes the evidence for whatever reason. Um, so there's, you know, some evidence lasts longer than others. So that's what the order of volatility is. Uh, volatile data that that is lost when it's powered off, the system's powered off, and, so, you know, procedures that should take it into account, right? Um, so this is what the order of, of uh, volatility will look like. This is a, a quick picture, you know, uh, disappearing the fastest up here. Oops. Here we go. Uh, let me see if I can get a highlighter up in here. Can I get a highlighter? Da, da, da. And laser pointer. Yeah, there we go. So here's network connections, right? So that disappears pretty fast. The processes, open files, RAM, of course, everybody knows RAM. RAM is highly volatile. Uh, if you reboot, it's gonna flush the data. Uh, so that's why people are always saying, please do not reboot the system. And that's what most users do. Most users, most corporations, the first thing they do is reboot because something's going on. They get, they get, uh, you know, either uh, scared or not sure what to do. Maybe a reboot will fix the problem and you can lose a lot of data. So you, you always wanna capture these four first you know, network connections, processes, open files, RAM, and then something that survives reboots is, you know, like remote log, event logs, uh, unless they clear the logs, right? And, you know, the disk image. So, cool. So what, what's uh, uh, network connections? An example of network connections could be IP address, right? Uh, it could be uh, IP domains, uh, currently connected. So think of NetStat on Windows. Uh, you know, what's currently connected on the system? What processes are connected to the internet? Uh, what what domains and IPs are the system connected to currently while the system's on? And you can run a, a, a command line and you can start seeing everything that computer's connected to. What process, what process ID, right? Um, you can list the processes that are executed on the system as well for as far as our next uh, order of volatility item that you want to capture uh, a list of processes currently run on the system. Um, if you reboot, those processes are, are not running and might not automatically restart. So you'll lose that artifact. You won't know it was running. So you want to capture the processes that are currently executed on the system any unusual process names like miss like a like a, a zero instead of an O, that's you know that's an indicator. Uh, maybe one too many uh, uh, processes that shouldn't be more than one. Uh, right? Um, there's there's some like service hosts that could be a, a bunch of tens of service host processes running on the system, but there's also certain processes where it should be only one instance, and it should be only one parent um, process as well. And if those two don't match up, then something's wrong. But if the person reboots the system, we'll never know. All right, let's see what else. Uh, open files, okay, so what's open files? Uh, files that attacker are currently looking at, so you, we can find that out. Um, what's being um, uh, open to store data to? What, what files are being saved as part of malware execution, right? Cool. So that's open files. And then let's see here. How do I turn? There we go. Cool. 
And then you want to look at, you know, memory, RAM image. What what can you capture in memory? This, this is kind of like a catch-all. You're going to have a lot of artifacts coming from the RAM. And, and it will contain most of the information uh, from network connection processes, right? And, and everything I went over quickly, the RAM is going to capture all that in the, in the kind of like catch-all. It's a snapshot of what's currently loaded onto onto the system and what's being executed on the system. That's what that's what it is. But just taking consideration, if you take a, a RAM image, if you're uh, acquiring or extracting a RAM and memory dump, whatever the size of the physical memory, that's how big the file is going to be. Okay, so just take that into consideration when you need to dump that that mem dump output somewhere. Um, it's gonna be it's gonna take up as much space as the physical uh, RAM installed. Okay, cool. And then if malware is running and being downloaded in, in, in RAM, if memory is being malware is being running and downloaded, um, it's stored. It'll be stored in memory. You'll be able to find it, extract it, evaluate it, analyze, analyze that information. And then user accounts and events will also be in the RAM image. Cool. So real this image, of course, that's the whole disk. Um, and then I, I did talk about O3C5 logs in the previous slide. Just know it's not part of the system triage data, but it's so important these days, uh, Office 365 data. And there is specific artifacts, observables, and events specific to Office 365 that I felt it should be included. Um, so that's why I put that in there. Oops. And... Uh, how'd I go back? There you go. All right. So quickly, and part of our forensic uh, training, before I dive into my block of instructions, I will be talking about, um, you know, uh, the file system analysis. But right now, part of the instructions will be host analysis. Um, you know, provide the detailed information on the system, user actions, right? That, that's the point of a host analysis. Uh, file use of knowledge, what the system is using, what actions are taking, and what's going on. What the heck is going on? Uh, you know, there's generations of timelines, um, and there's also uh, an in-depth review of components. You know, you can look at uh, registry values, right? Event logs. You can look at users' action and logs, network connections, remote access, RDPs, VNC, uh, any type of remote access, file access, and execution times. You can tell all that by being doing the host analysis, knowing a little bit about uh, forensic, Windows forensics or forensics in general can give you a lot of answers. Let's see here. And, and it, it's, not, it's not hard to learn. I'll be honest here. It's not hard to learn. Anybody can learn DFER or digital forensic incident response. It's not, it's not a skill set that is above anybody because it's not complicated. Now, if you want to do in-depth analysis and research, uh, then it starts getting more more granular. Um, you know, the knowledge starts expanding and it starts uh, amassing real, uh, you know, so much that it starts to, starts to get complicated. But initial triage data and initial triaging uh, a system, it's not hard. Anybody can learn. Um, I'll, I'll even go as far as, you know, uh, you can probably teach a high school kid to do digital forensics, to be honest, um, as long as they have the attention span. But now I'm making decisions and making recommendations and conveying that message. Now that's where it gets hard. And writing the reports, that's when it gets harder. Okay, cool. But doing actual digital forensics is not hard. All right, cool. So... Something that I was, I've been working on lately, um, in, in my case, in my investigations, is timelines. And I never put as much respect into timelines that I should have. It's probably, probably like a better term, respect. But a timeline is very important in digital forensics. Uh, it can paint a picture uh, for a new analysts. Um, something like Manny Redline, right? The, the triage tool where it is the GUI tool, Manny Redline. Um, they, it captures all the artifacts for you, right? Correct. Well, there's an option or a tab um, where you can just click create timeline or look at a timeline. It's capturing all events 
uh, artifacts with a timestamp. And this is where most newer analysts begin and, and season, season analysts because it paints a picture. Uh, once you get more seasoned, you can start breaking down and not incorporating everything you find into a timeline. But it's, it's a pretty good view to paint a picture of what happened during this time. Um, say malware, so you know the time the malware ran. Well, you can backtrack from that time of execution or uh, the time of the malware was running, and you can backtrack with a timeline. Um, and I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna do a demo here at the end of this. Uh, but usually, just just know timelines is the order of important and seeming unimportant events in order. So if a timeline, any any data source you fit into it that has a timestamp. It will populate a timeline and you can see take multiple data sources under one page. Most people use Excel, right? Microsoft Excel is probably the most used forensic tool there is. Excel and Google. But then there's also some tools, you know, just specifically to create timelines, which I'll go into. Just some things to remember by a timeline. Always, always, always use Zulu time or UTC time. Um just makes it easier when you have to share that information with somebody else. Um, but timestamps are usually, well, are in UTC time or in local time. So just be uh, aware of that. Okay. And then, you know, there's there's the, what else is in, in, in a generic timeline? It's the source of information. So since you have multiple sources in one, ex, let's, let's say Excel spreadsheet, yeah, you want to annotate or highlight where the source is coming from. Did you capture it from the disk? Did you capture it from the RAM? Did you capture it from the event logs? And it makes it easy to distinguish the source, uh, the data source, right? Uh, you also want to highlight the type of information and the description of the information. That's it. That's all you need for a timeline. And it will help forensics investigations times 10. Okay, cool. So what's next? Oops, that's how timeline looks like. Okay, so now you can create your own timeline, just extracting and parsing, doing one-liners in PowerShell, Python, or manually inserting, extracting, right? Or you can use Super Timeline with Colasso, a tool specifically made for creating super timelines. Um, so it expands the timeline focus outside the file system. So that's pretty cool. Uh, they traditionally timeline has been traditionally focused on just the file system when the, when the files were created, you know the Mac time uh, or or created uh, last modified and access time, right? Um, but there's many other places or sources where time events occur, like we were just talking about. It can be multiple uh, data sources for your timeline, prefetch, shim cache. Um, all kinds of execution places that you can look, uh, execution artifacts, uh, browsing history, and so many, so much more that you can insert into the timeline. Super Timeline will help you digest all that, parse all that, cut it up, and just worry about the the artifacts and the time, the time slice that you're worried about. Okay, cool. Um, let's see. So let's go talk a, bit, a little bit about Palasso. Uh, originally was created by Google. I'm actually not sure if it's still maintained by Google or by somebody else. Um, but, oh, they did Google. Let me see here. Let me actually, so this is a Twitch, Twitch stream, right? So actually, let me do, let me do this. So this is, we're informal here, right? Let's do a, Here we go. So I mean, I'll put Colasso timeline. And this is what I used. Uh, this is what I used. Let me know, is it hard to see? Oh, I think it's kind of hard to see, right? Uh, let me know in chat, is it hard to see the screen? Okay, uh, let me let me try something dark mode maybe. Let's see, let's do dark mode. 
dark mode. Sorry about that. I just wanted to show uh, Palazzo GitHub, but it seems to be hard to read. Still having issues here. I am an old man, uh, so I'm not sure how Twitch works, but the browser is real hard to read. But I just went to the Palazzo GitHub. That's all I did, and I was trying to find out who maintains it, and I think it's Google, but let me find out here. I wish you guys can see my screen. So this is the first Twitch stream that in a line of many Twitch streams that I'll be doing. So please take this with a grain of salt and apologize for the technical difficulties. And who's maintaining? I thought it was Google, but I guess not Google. That's maintaining Palazzo. But just Google Palazzo lock the timeline and it'll take you to the GitHub. And it'll, it'll tell you all the documentation. But some, some of the things that you can use with uh, Blast or Google and uh, super creating for creating super timeline, uh, you can plus, uh, parse all the different uh, um, formats, parse the system and place it in many different formats. So you can extract it to a, to an Excel format. You can extract it to a JSON. So what do you want JSON? Well, you want to extract it to a JSON format because a lot of sims ingest JSON natively, right? So, um, and then there's locked uh, timeline pi, which is a, a Python script. You know, it actually creates time, timeline. Uh, you can do a one liner with locked timeline pi, and that's all you need. That's the kitchen sink approach. If you if you point that Python script to uh, to evidence. And it will go through all the different modules, and it will parse that evidence. It could be a this image, it could be a master file, a master file table, uh, file, a uh, master file table, record. It could be a bunch of different data sources, and Palazzo will create a timeline for you, uh, without doing any any additional uh, parsing, uh, tweaking. It will create, but it will take a long time because it's going through so many modules. Okay, then there's PSort. Uh, PSORT is another Python script they can use uh, in, in to filter down the results even more. Then there's uh, PSTEEL. PSTEEL is lock the timeline pi and PSORT together. That's what PSTEEL is. Okay, cool. Um, Plasma is easy to use, but it's time consuming because um, it's, it's taking lots, lots of data and it's going through a lot of scripts. It's doing a lot of backend stuff. In order to make it easy for the for the analyst or for the investigator examiner, so it's doing a lot of stuff in the timeline. So if you give it a this image, if you just point Plasso to this image, it'll create a timeline, but it might take an hour or two. <laughs> so that's why you want to filter it out beforehand, uh, pre-processing. Most people call it right. Okay, cool. Uh, let's see here. So this is how it'll look like. Here's an example. Um, let's see, what can we see here? See, you see the different data. So let me get my laser pointer. You can see the timestamp, the UTC. You can see the different colors. And actually, the different colors means there's a legend. <coughs> oh, excuse me. There's a legend uh, on the GitHub docs and on, I believe, in the in the folder, what tells you what every color means. There, there, there's a specific use case or this specific definition for what each color means like execution is one color um you know user activity is another color so they have a definition for each color um they also have local time utc time and the source is important because we need to present this evidence either in a disposition um you know some kind of legal proceeding or to a ceo or uh, a point of contact you want to know where you got that data source because we're about stating facts. So cool. So he, here we got email PST. We got the uh, NT master file table, which we'll talk about here a little bit. We got prefetch, some execution, file user knowledge, right? Um, here's some user activity, uh, some shortcut links. So a shortcut, all the shortcut links. So all the shortcuts on your desktop, this is what this is. Ah, 
This is my boss. <laughs> so Tyler, Tyler, right here we see the user Tyler created some some desktop links to uh, Excel sheet. Okay, cool. And here's the registry hive, right? The software key right here. Uh oh, something something's going on in the run key. So the, what's the run key, right? Run key something that that runs once or run, runs at, at a startup. Um, so this is a persistent mechanism right here. Um, and and as, as soon as you start to recognize the evidence, you can just look at a timeline and kind of figure out what's going on. But there's nothing wrong with looking at Google or looking at a book and and looking up definitions. There's no way we can know everything. There's no way. All right. Now let's get to my... Uh, let me stop right here real quick and let me see the chat. Let me see what's going on in the chat. What up, y'all? So that was a real quick intro. This is real informal. And I'm going to do a demo um, on my lab machine. And so that will be pretty cool. Uh, but we're, this is kind of like a test run. Any questions so far from what I covered? Uh, I know I mumble a little bit. And sometimes I, I talk kind of quickly or my accents in a way. So just let me know any questions. I'll stop for like a second here. Uh, just to recap real quick, and then we'll move on to the file system. Uh, just to recap real quick, what we did, we did, you know, what's a forensic investigation? You know, we, we did get, we, I did the, the standard wiki definition. <laughs> um, you know, we did the order of volatility, right? Cause there's important artifacts that need to capture act quick as possible. Because either the user is going to restart the computer, uh, the, the threat actor is going to delete his tracks, uh, hide his tracks, and, and try to delete it if they can, or the IT team is going to come in and, and push group policy and reboot the system or something, right? Something crazy. Uh, so we talked about that. Uh, let's see what else. Talk about order volatility. We talked about, you know, quickly a high overview super high overview of uh, host analysis and what it entails. Now, one of my favorite subjects now currently, because I, I worked on it recently, is timelines. And I think they're very important. Um, trying to move away from just Excel and trying to move into automated process, LASSO will help you do that, right? And I want to say it was developed by Google, but I think I'm misquoting myself on that. <laughs> and here's an example. Cool, let me see the questions here. Alrighty. Never trust the Tyler. Oh, <laughs> I didn't put that. <laughs> Let's see here. All right, cool. All right. So let's move on to the file system. All right. So the NT file system, that's what NTFS stands for, right? All right. So the Windows file system will be the most common, NTFS will be the most common file system you're gonna run into. Why? Because it's proprietary to Windows, Microsoft Windows. That's what Windows uses, that's what you're gonna run into, but just know every operating system has their own file system, but I'm just gonna be talking about NTFS because it gotta be like 90% out there, NTFS, or what you're gonna run into, because we're examining user machines most of the time, they're using Windows, right? All right, cool. But, you know, Mac has their own file system. Linux has their, you know, their hundreds of file systems that you can pick from. Um, and it's an important data source for incident responders and digital forensic examiners. So, real quick, what's the difference between incident responders, digital forensics? The time you want to answer questions. Digital forensic examiners, like law enforcement, they have a little bit more time. They can do a little more in-depth research. Uh, and, you know, they're not necessarily worried about just answering the question as quick as possible. They have other considerations like changing the custody, integrity of evidence, uh, and getting ready for dispositions, correct? Um, it's the responders, even though we do care about chain of custody, um, we care about the integrity of the evidence, that is, is, is pertinent, that's important, but our top priority is answer the question as quick as possible. What the heck is going on on the system? and what's going on in that environment. That's that's our main job is to answer the question as quick as possible. So that's the main difference between these two, but they overlap a lot, obviously. NTFS, most common file system um, that you're gonna run into, cause it's on Windows, cool. Uh, it was developed in the early 90s. 
Uh, before that, you know, it took over the FAT12, FAT16, FAT32 file system, right? And with that, uh, increased uh, size limitations, a um, lot uh, implemented security features, uh, and, you know, a lot of cool stuff. A lot of cool stuff implemented, and for forensic examiners and instant responders, a lot of helpful artifacts as well. All right, cool. All right. Uh, window file system, the different types of window file systems that you are going to run into. Uh, maybe not the FAT16 and FAT, FAT32, you will. USBs, just think of USBs, right? Uh, but FAT12, FAT16 for the MS-DOS days, Windows 95 and Windows 98, 2000 and NT. And then the FAT32, you know, you know they, they upgraded for 2003, XP, Vista. But every USB or a lot of USBs will be FAT32, will be FAT. So just realize that. All right. And it and, and really is a simple file system compared to the more, more advanced ones uh, when you take a deep dive into it. Uh, then, you know, then there's the XFAT, right? Which is a, a newer version. Uh, same thing, USBs. If, if you reformat your, your, your Windows system, right click one format you have two choices right yeah ntfs or xfat okay so that's where that's where where you've seen it from if you don't know where you've seen it um uh, and then ntfs of course uh, so what did xfat do xfat improved the file the fat file system eliminated the the four gigabyte limitation right of of, of fat 16 fat 32 uh, so that's awesome um, there's no such thing as fat 64 it's not <laughs> just uh just some people call it fat 64 no it's xfat <laughs> uh ntfs increased reliability uh implemented journaling um it can support long and short file names yes that was a thing short and long file names was a thing um and then you can recover easier with ntfs okay cool all right so there's a lot of important data, uh, data sources coming from the NTF file system. One of the most important data sources you can capture, and it doesn't take a, a lot to capture it, is the master file table. Um, with any file system, as with any file system, right? Uh, NTFS, the NT file system, defines how the disk space will be allocated. That's what it's doing. That's his main job, and is is to to make a, a metaphor or a, what's the word metaphor or to to give a example of how you can think about it. You can think of a master file table as a catalog of what every file is doing. What I mean by that, it'll, it'll capture a timestamp. It'll, it'll 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 define the size. It, it'll give you the attributes and permissions of every file object on the disk. It'll give, tell you the context, the directory, and the parent directory. That's right there. That's a whole lot of information. Um, just think about it. If, if a file gets deleted, the master file table has a, a catalog record number. And it has the timestamp. It has the attribute permission of that deleted file. You can piece together the puzzle pretty easy with the master file table. Um, it's a meta, metadata gold mine, the master file table. It's awesome. I love it. It gets complicated the more you research, but it's not hard to understand from a instant responder's perspective. If you just want to know what we're talking about or what we're looking at, it's not hard to understand at all. It's a catalog of every file object on the file system. It's a pretty cool direct pretty cool data source might be my might be my favorite one but i'm biased just because i've been working on it uh for this training class so i might be a little biased all right cool so there there is a few caveats to the master file table um well first of all the root the, the dollar sign mft file it's on every volume so if you have if you have five volumes on your on your endpoint 
every volume, every drive, C drive, D drive, E drive, every drive that has a volume will have an MFT record. Just realize that. Um, so everybody will capture the C, uh, the C drive MFT, but maybe this endpoint has an additional uh, volume, like a data store or a file share that you might want to capture that MFT uh, record as well. Um, it can tell you the files that were deleted, that were executed, right? Uh, one caveat right here is uh, you can't access the MFT with just Window Explorer. Uh, you might be able to see it when you unlock the hidden uh, file uh, attribute in Windows systems, right? But you won't be able to look at it just because the, the Windows API just doesn't have access to a, a running disk, a raw disk, right? It doesn't have access to the raw disk access. Um, but there's a bunch of tools that you can. Um, there's, you know, the, there's the FTK imager, there's NCase. Um, there, there's a bunch of, there, there's hex, there's, what is it, there's hex viewer. There's so many MFT, F, uh, MFT tools that will parse the data for you that you don't really have to worry about it. Just know you can't access it normal means. Just get the right tool, download it for free, and you can start looking at MFT, right? Either what if this is running or capturing the data. Okay, cool. Uh, what's next? Each file has multiple entries. That's what they, that's what it's called um, to, to, to the different metadata, the different, um, information of each file has entries. Um, what, is that, what does that mean? Uh, entry, entries are metadata attributes. Okay, so what are the type of attributes and, and entries that, that each file has? Well, this, would, this can tell you the record type. So the record type, is it a file or is it a directory? What you're looking at in the master file table? Um, you know, is it a file, directory? Cool. Um, and then it catalogs that file or directory with a sequence number and it, it you know, it goes up sequentially, um, and records everything by number, each file and directory that be, that's very important because you can correlate that with the parent directory and you're trying to prove, uh, the my law enforcement people file use and knowledge, right? This will help you, uh, correlate that with file use and knowledge. Somebody deleted something. Well, I got the record number and here's a print directory, um, correlated or aggregated with other, uh, evidence. You have a pretty good, uh, case, right? All right. And there's the parent record number right here. Um, so what was the parent directory? And that's, that's important for file use of knowledge. It's the file. So the, is the file deleted. The actual attribute is active inactive flag. It's the actual attribute or entry that that shows if the file is deleted or not. If the file was deleted, that that uh, that record or that entry will just be marked inactive flag. That's it. So even if they delete something, if we go to the MFT, you can find it pretty easily, um, and just look for the inactive flag, and it'll tell you all the files that have been deleted. So cool. If it's active, it's still on the disk. Okay. Uh, and then the attributes. So the different uh, attributes or metadata, right, is the SI, dollar sign SI for standard information, um, dollar sign FN for file name, and dollar sign data. These are important artifacts that we'll, we'll dig into later. Uh, but these are important, and there's more as well. All right, cool. Uh, let me see what's going on in Twitch. Google for the win. <laughs> Chickens experience rapid eye movement. Okay. <laughs> hey, so they're talking about the DeLorean. Yeah, so Hacking Dave, our, our fearless leader, has a new, brand new DeLorean, and it's pretty sweet. I haven't told him yet, but I really want to ride in that thing. <laughs> but uh, maybe one day when all this crazy stuff is over. All right, all righty. Any questions so far? All right. Let's go next. Here's a super high, high, high quality graphic I created here quickly. <laughs> super high graphics 
Um, I took two days to create this. And this is, so if you want to visualize a master file, uh, MFT file record, just know this is 128 28 bits. Here is the record header. Here's your standard info, which is uh, the uh, SI. Here's the file name, the FN, and here's the data, right? And this is usually on, on allocated space, right? But just know this this 1024. Um, you know, you know, uh, on a standard hard drive, there's 512 sectors, uh, byte sectors. Uh, the you know the the, the structure as a series is 124 uh, byte record. Okay, so just realize that is it is it important? Not yet, but it could be. Okay, is this helps you understand instead of doing the GUI and and having the GUI do all the work for you, you, you want to understand what's going on underneath a little bit because you're gonna have to explain what's going on um, instead of just you know for uh, here here's a little anecdote side story. A lot, lot of newer analysts absolutely know how to capture, acquire artifacts, and know absolutely how to how to present the data. But when they ask, you know, when they get asked questions or when they they're asked to explain what's going on, that's when it starts running issue. Um, so that's why you want to understand what's going on underneath, because you're gonna get asked questions, and you need to answer those questions from the, from a CEO. From a, a point of contact, from law enforcement, um, you know, or just just a, a, another analyst who who you're trying to explain what's going on, you know. So you want to understand what's going on underneath. Uh, let's see here. Ah, so I'm going to hit the demo here quickly. So who's trying? Let's see what's going on quickly. So my team, so I'm, I'm part of the <laughs> IR team here at Trusted Tech. Nobody knows that. Nobody knows we have an IR team. So I'm here to tell you we do instant response. We do digital forensics. We do threat hunting. Uh, we do tabletop exercises. We do a lot of blue team stuff. Um, so, but I'm going to make a, they don't know I'm doing this, but I'm actually going to uh, introduce you to my to my team and who I work for. So. I was going to do some memes, but I didn't do it. All right. So here's our practice lead. Uh, I'm going to do a demo after I introduce the, the trainers. This is Tyler Hudak. <laughs> and he doesn't know I'm doing this. Uh, he's an IR practice lead. He's awesome. He's old school. He came from one original SOX uh, created. You know, he worked at big time security uh, firms. Um, a lot of people you know. Uh, most people you know, you probably know him. He, he teaches classes in the pro side, on pro side for malware classes. Um, he's awesome. He, he's probably the best mentor I, I can ask for. Uh, two things that, but he, he leads our practice for instant response and probably two facts that nobody knows about, uh, unless you know him, he's an avid game master. I hope it's okay that I'm saying this, but he, he's like, uh, not Dungeons and Dragons, but, uh, th there are tabletops of, of different genres. Um, so he's, he's real avid. He's an avid game master. Pretty cool. And actually incorporated it into tabletop exercises. I just want to say that because I think that's pretty cool. Um, and if you're lucky, you might see him in a dragon costume. He he wears it like unannounced and just wears it out of nowhere, like maybe once a year. So if you're lucky, you actually see him at a at a happy hour with a dragon costume, like for like no reason. Um, <laughs> somebody said I'm fired, but it's pretty cool. <laughs> like your practice lead, it, you know, is pretty cool. So, all right. Next, our principal security consultant. Um, you know he has that fancy title, but because he deserves it, um, he's a he's a principal security consultant. Uh, the rest of us are lowly senior consultants, uh, but this is our principal. But he's awesome. He's a, he's a CTF party crash. He likes to do CTFs. He doesn't even tell nobody. He just starts doing CTFs and like, oh yeah, I just finished this CTF, and then he does malware analysis for fun. Um, so not only does he get paid for doing malware analysis, he also does it for fun which I think that's crazy, but awesome at the same time. <laughs> All right. Uh, Justin Veer Curl. He, I have a lot in common with him. We both come from the military. Um, he's tatted up just like I am. We have a lot in common. 20 years of experience. He's he's a, a threat hunting guru for sure. He leads a lot of threat hunting gigs 
and he's really focused on office techniques and threat intelligence. Um, but day to day, every day, we do uh, instant response, but we all have additional duties, right? Responsibilities. He's always working on home projects, and um, he likes to jack up podcasts, which he put me on about leadership. It's not just military focus, it's about leadership. So he's real big on leadership and leading from the front, leading by example. Um, so that's pretty cool. And then Bunio KK, another fellow Texan like myself, he was a previous C++ programmer. Uh, he started his security career after programming in the SOC. So he's our Splunk guru. Um, is any, if there's any questions on Sims or Splunk in, in general, we're going to him. Um, I put Jack of Podcast, but that was, that's, that's Vic, that's Justin. Um, so he's awesome. And so let me get the demo going here. Um, you guys have any questions while I get a demo going? This is real informal. Ask me anything. Um, this is not a webinar. This is not a training class. This is me trying to get, get to know people and kind of like a test run. Oh, nice. Nice. So, um, Sick in the mind that said, I support massive Splunk infrastructure at JPMC. Uh, yeah, Splunk is awesome. If, if you know, if they're a little bit more affordable, um, they'll be the number one choice for everybody, I would think. Um, they're not affordable to everybody, so that's why people go to alternatives. But we love Splunk, we don't use Splunk day to day, um, but it's pretty cool. All right, any other questions while I get the demo up? No pressure? <laughs> All right. So this is my lab machine. Let's see, hopefully it works. I'm usually working off a of Mac, but I'm using my lab machine for this one. All right, here's my lab. So if you guys don't know, Automated Labs is a pretty cool way to set up your lab with a uh, PowerShell like four liner, like four lines of PowerShell. Um, you can set up a domain in like four lines of PowerShell. It's pretty cool. So look up Automated Labs on GitHub and they, they have a wiki and you can have a lab up and running in like 10 minutes. Uh, instead of working through VMware, yes, XI, uh, Prometheus, or uh, Proxmox, sorry, Proxmox. Instead of working through all that, um, no need, it, it's a good exercise because you want to understand virtualized nested infrastructures. You want to learn about clustering, pulling resources, and just from a inf information security perspective, you want to know what IT admins are doing day to day. But don't get it twisted. We're not IT admins, but it's still good to know what they're going through day to day. And then after that, automate that stuff. You know, you, you don't want to go uh, create everything from scratch all the time. So I use Automated Labs after I created and lot, lots of pain and, and lots of pain and suffering. So I just turned to Automated Labs. So let's see here. All right. I'm not a big Hyper-V person, so I'm not too familiar with it. But how hard could it be, right? Famous last words. How hard could it be? Watch it, watch it crash right now. All right, super fancy password. You'll never guess what it is. All right, so here's my test machine. All right, so, all right. So let's talk about how we gonna get this MFT, right? Splunk isn't just a dashboard, is my point. Yeah, yeah. Splunk is awesome. Um, we get, we actually, when I was looking into, into researching like the best way to create timelines to get away from Excel, Splunk was a good option. If only we can justify the cost, of how, you know, for like small IR team, oh, you know, we'll be on it, and you can create awesome timelines on in Splunk instead of, you know, using something outside the sim, like Palazzo. Um, so it, it was pretty cool. Um, you can do a lot of uh, research, investigations, case management. So I'm a big fan, for sure. All right. 
All right, so this let's say this is the host machine here, and I'm trying to capture an MFT, correct? All right, let me know if you guys can see this. All right, uh, let me see Windows. What are you doing, Windows? All right, so now I'm gonna do acquisition. Okay, I I'm on the endpoint, and I need to acquire some data, right? Uh, obviously, don't take my example. You can't see that. Let me try to fix the monitor real quick. Can you guys see the screen? Or is it hard to read? Zoom in? Okay. How do you zoom in on Windows? <laughs> Shrink my resolution. Oh, yeah. It's a 4K screen. You're right. You're right. All right. How about... Yeah, I need, how do you increase the resolution here? Here you go, view. Zoom level. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Let's try, let's try this. <laughs> that didn't do anything. Yes, it's hard to read. Maybe I can do something in Streamlabs. Set smaller size and set VM to, new, to view as stretch. Oh, I'm not in a Mac, man. All right, set smaller size and set VM view to stretch. All right. Let's try that. Full screen mode. Uh, no, I don't think that's it. If I do the zoom, yeah, sure. Let's try that. Oh, snaps. Okay, there you go. You guys see now? <laughs> okay. It is trippy. All right. That's trippy. All right. So I'm going to try to do a triage. <laughs> <laughs> all right so i'm going to do a triage on the system of course you want to take in consideration integrity uh so you're not actually going to run a triage tool try not to run a triage tool locally on the system try to run it remotely try to do it as minimal interaction to the endpoint as possible because you want to have that 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 paper trail you want to have the least amount of modifications on the system as you can because it's if you ever go it's never most of the time 99 percent it's not going to go this position right or to court but in that one percent chance it will they're going when you get cross examined by whoever you're going to get creamed by by the prosecutor or defender um you're going to get creamed because they're going to take everything into question if they're good if they're good sometimes they're not but so you want to minimize the interaction with the endpoint and it'll, it'll screw your artifact findings right but anyways i'm going to run it locally on the system i'm going to run a triage tool there's multiple triage tools you can take um there's cape right cape by um what is it the no group there's many redline there's anything to gather uh gather triage artifacts in this home is homegrown scripts. We create our own here at, at, at TrustedSec. It, it's just Python wrapped up in executable, right? So we're going to run that now. Uh -oh. Let's see if I can run Windows here. Uh, yep. I 
I don't run Windows too much. You know, I don't hate it, especially with WSL. WSL. Windows is not a bad option. Um, so, so don't let the evangelists uh, fool you. Windows is not that bad. Whatever works, right? All right, ls. Uh, all right, so now I'm just gonna run my triage tool here. All right. Oh, it's not. Not bad. My bad. All right. So I'm guarding. I'm gathering artifacts right now. Uh, just the important artifacts. Uh, I'm just gonna try to collect. Um, so system information, right? That's the artifacts. I'm gonna gather system information. And I actually ran this already, so I'm just gonna pull up what I captured. That way is not all. Cause it takes like it doesn't take long, but we don't want to sit here five ten minutes. All right, I'll get back over there. And this is what I captured. There we go. All right. Okay, press the, the window key. I don't have a window key. Okay. So this is what I captured, right? And usually, <laughs> usually I captured the MF key. Which is not in here. I'm sorry about that. So let me let me so let's do that real quick then. Let's capture the MFT and then let's look at it. Any questions so far? What's going on in chat? Why this thing is starting to start up? Is that browser for ants? <laughs> uh, so I have a 4K monitor, and yeah, I probably should have uh, worked that out beforehand, huh? Alrighty. Uh, let's capture this MFT real quick here. I'm just making sure it's not running in the background so I can capture the MFT. All right, cool. Alrighty, so we do uh, um, All right, let's capture the MFT here. Output. 
This is my plant. And now I'm capturing the MFP here. Then we can look at it here. Okay, I guess it's not capturing. All right, my demo is bombing. Pretty bad. So my demo bombed pretty bad. Uh, my tool is not working. But see, let me let me get an example though of MFT here. What can I show that I've been working on? What can I show? What can I show? Yeah. Oh, there we go. There we go. Sheesh. So you see right here, since I only have one volume, it's only capturing one MFT, and there's no size right now because it's still dumping, but you'll see the size, and then we can analyze the MFT here. And so while that's running, You see it's dumping all the files here. So while that was running, let me turn to the chat while that's running. Here. All right, what we got in the chat? Let's see what y'all got. Yeah, I appreciate you guys coming out um, and hanging out with me at lunch. Uh, I wish I had more, uh, but I, uh, you know, I'm, go I'm gonna rework this and maybe do another stream next week just to make it more thorough because this is a i'm not satisfied with this um but i'm my own worst critic as well but yeah i'm not i'm not happy with this uh so i'll have to re-engage the the team and, and conduct another stream we're here with just uh evidence provi pre-provided uh what question you all have Oh yeah, yeah. So somebody asked, uh, West Girl Seven is asking, do you use other tools in conjunction with TSIR? So TSIR is just a triage tool and um, extraction or acquisition tool. That's all it is for for triaging, um, and it captures the same evidence artifacts that any other triage tool uses. But one of the things I like to use for registry, I like to use Registry Explorer, right? Uh, Eric Zimmerman tools. I love Eric, Eric Zimmerman tools. Um, so we use his um, event command, RE command. All his command line tools are awesome for creating. Uh, his command line tools are awesome for creating timelines. Uh, that's why I like it. Anything by Eric Zimmerman. And let me see here. Let me actually bring up the web page. Hey everybody, how you? I wish I could play music in the background. Can I see? All right, cool. All right, let's go, Eric Zimmerman. Here we go. So we say in my history. You guys can see? Yep. Okay, cool. 
So I like to use out of here from every Zimmerman tools. He he has his own repo. Um, that I know of. I'm not sure if this is open source. I gotta look at the license. Um, so he creates cape. Oh yeah, the crow artifact parser. So this is another triage tool. It's free. Uh, he gives classes on it, so I want to you know give him a shout out that he gives classes on cape uh, specifically. Um, but this is his tool. But I love to use. I use Timeline Explorer uh, sometimes because uh, sometimes PowerPoint is too resource intensive, uh, or Excel, I should say. And this is a real simplistic way of looking at a timeline. It can be a CSV or Excel uh, format. And this is like minimal timeline viewer. And it's pretty cool. Um, but you won't be able to modify the Excel, right? You won't be able to modify it. You can, you can only read it, color code it. Uh, you can export it. Yeah, you can export it as well. Uh, I, don't, I don't really use Shellback Explorer. I do use our uh, registry floor, the GUI version, um, in conjunction with uh, my timeline analysis, either with Plasso or, or RE command. But I like to look at the GUI when it comes to the registry, because the registry has a lot of highs, right? Let's see here. Yeah, so the registry, it, it gets pretty complicated and, and you know it's real convoluted so I like to have a visual representation uh, not just a timeline with the you know a command line I like to see uh, the, the structures of the different hives I like to see the keys I like to see the values uh, I'm a visual person um, so I like to use registry Explorer it's a GUI and RE command is the uh, command line and you know I love this tool and he has plugins as well in Registry Explorer, there's plugins where oh, actually you parse like the shim cache, user exists. Um, so this is the intro. So I'm not gonna go too deep into what each artifact does because this is a, like an intro. Uh, but Registry Explorer has plugins for all the valuable, most common artifacts already. Because um, otherwise you have to do it by hand manually. The plugins are already built in for you to parse uh, user act, user action, user activity, uh, web browser history, um, things that users type in into their search box. That's already parsed for you with the plugin. So that's pretty cool. I like to use, here's MFT Explorer, uh, to view, to view the MFT. So this is pretty cool. I, uh, and this is, so this is the GUI version and this is the command line version. Uh, the only difference, the MFT Explorer. Uh, if the if the MFT is is too big, like the file size is too big, this will have issues. Like I think over anything over one gig, MFT Explorer will have issues. Um, so you can just use MFT uh, command and create a timeline and export it to Excel. And I use sometimes I use Event Explorer. I do use Event Command uh, to create. So this will parse. So here, let's see if I can get back to the screen somehow. There we go. All right, so this finished capturing auto artifacts. Cool. All oh, I thought I did. Oh, there we go. Okay, so this is what it captured, the triage tool. Every triage tool is going to capture the same thing. Cape is going to capture it. Manny Redline is going to capture it. Any other triage tool that's free on GitHub is going to capture it. And But this is just ours that we created. We're on source code. The research team, IR team took over and started developing it. Um, we're we're, we're going to rebase it here soon or uh, refactor or my, we might just rewrite it, actually. I'm not the biggest Python fan, but uh, everybody else likes Python. But here's the events. So I can, you could actually point, here's all the events on my system, right? I could actually point 
event command to this folder to the root to the parent directory of all my events and it'll, it'll create a excel sheet a csv or a spreadsheet um uh, and you can just sort it by time and there you have a like an informal timeline um sorted by by timestamps in utc so i do like event command and i like to manipulate the data so that's why i use the command line and not the explorer even though a visual representation is nice you can do so much more to manipulate the data either with your python scripts either with uh grep set awk which is you know right uh, uh linux utilities native some old school linux utilities to manipulate the, manipulate the data and parse the data um so that's what i like to do event command easy viewer uh that's pretty cool too if you have a system that's low on resources and you want to look at an excel sheet or a spreadsheet you can use X, uh easy viewer and those are like the main ones i use um, for new analysts, which this is an intro to Windows Forensic. All right, new analysts, and for uh, not Reddit. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Don't look at my Reddit history. Uh, I'm ashamed of that. No, nothing crazy. Just basketball. Um, Mania Redline, right? Mania Redline. This is probably the most popular triage tool, and it's free. Yeah, I would say this is the most popular. To make you sign up, just give them fake info so they don't spam you to to death, right? Um, but this captures everything, and it's a it's a GUI, it's a GUI, and it captures the same data and it's easy as this in a nice GUI format. Um, to include the event logs, so. So I was thinking of, a, of another demo uh, of doing a timeline quickly, uh, but I'm not sure how quickly it could be. But let's see here. What's going on in the stream? Do you use any other tools? What y'all have a question? Yeah, easy tools are one of the best and free. You can play, no copyright music. Otherwise, VOD will get muted. What if I just make up my own music? You guys want to hear me sing? No? Okay. B-Strings is cool. So B strings um, or uh, on Windows is awesome, but if you use Linux, they use strings and and point it towards uh, uh, a file, right? Uh, on Linux is native, but on Windows you don't have native uh, string tool. But you can use B strings or you can use the sys internal strings, right? Well, I forgot what it's called. Do you guys leverage list DLLs from sys internals? I believe in the back end we do. Oh, or is in development? Is in our dev? Is in our dev environment? I believe. Um, so we don't. U I don't utilize it. We don't utilize it for for triage in our end. Like once we we're going on the investigation and we're going to a case and we need a triage. Not not that I know of. We're not using list DLLs exe. But I think it's in the back end of our triage tool. I think. Uh, remember when taking G said that was one of the vital ones to identify flags. Yep. I'm okay with Python, but I'd rather go with a tool that does the fastest release overhead. C. C. Basketball and oh, you saw my history. OM VPN. <laughs> you saw my Reddit history. Get out of here, man. Just quickly. Yeah, he does. That's pretty much my life outside of security is mechanical keyboards and basketball. That's it. I'm a boring person. Uh, any other? So you guys want a demo on a timeline or I can just do a video and upload it to YouTube. Uh, I think that might be the best way. Oh, I can do a live demo now. Uh, wh what do y'all want to talk about? Or we can just end it and I'll upload, upload a video and then I'll continue on. Um, and then upload the video through the trusted sec account of, of the demo or like a timeline demo MFT demo uh, That way I'm not keeping you guys forever Or you guys are gone already. Oh, no, it says 43 viewers 
how can we be part of TSIR? So they have job postings and we are, we are hiring, we are hiring, um, senior consultants. So there, there's, there's, if, if you're, you're, if you're conf, even if you're not confident, I would still say apply, uh, to a senior position because the worst we can do is say no, but along the way, along the way, you're going to get that experience from senior personnel. You're going to get experience from, you're going to get to talk to, uh, you know, hopefully Dave Kennedy, but not only him, you're going to talk to other team members or whatever team you apply to, they're going to give you advice. So even if you don't think you're a senior, I say apply, but if you go to trustsec.com, um, they have a job posting. Yeah. Trustsec.com. They have job postings. Um, and sometimes we hire mid-level junior interns. There's an intern program, um, go to the website for more information, but I believe right now we're, we're looking for seniors. Um, so if you see a job posting and it says senior apply, um, but U S no, it's not U S only. Um, it's not, it is what we have. We have team members in Europe. Nobody in Asia that I know of. And then, um, but we have team members in, in Europe, and, you know, great team members. Um, nobody in Asia or South America that I know of. But yes, it's, it's, uh, it is not GS only. We're fully remote. We're, we're 100% remote. Everybody is. Uh, so you can work out of the ocean if you want, as long as you have internet. Um, let's see what are questions. What if we're not competent or confident? I, I say, I say, what's the worst we can do? Say no. I mean, what's the harm in that, right? Um, even even if you if we say no, like so what? Uh, we're we're one small company. Don't don't hinder yourself from applying. Um, most people that get, I know with me, most people uh, that get got the job from TSIR. I wasn't expecting it. Um, I, when I got out of the military. I got shut down like probably a thousand times. I mean, I'm talking like Google brought me up to campus, uh, show me around. I'm talking about Facebook, uh, walk me into the, not to the sock, but they walk me into the team area. Like, so I, I'll get on campus, but for whatever reason, I wasn't closing the deal, but I learned so much and I met such cool people out of those teams that I'm still in touch with them. Um, I still in touch with like people in the security team. I'm still in touch with people on the Twitter security team. I'm still in touch with people on the Facebook security team. Like nothing says we, we can't talk afterwards and they're always helpful. And same thing with us. If you, even if you're not confident or confident, apply and you'll never know unless you try. And if you are looking for a job, like you don't have to get shut down and you don't, you don't have to suck it up because everybody gets shut down. Everyone gets shut down. I got shot down. Uh, it was disheartening, but I learned so much from each interview. It is. So I say apply. Does visa matter with Dave on selecting people that I'm not sure. Um, Hey, you know what? Let, let me, let me get you guys the address to our disc discord. Let me see here. I should just use my Mac. So let me bring up my, we have a discord and the T like we have like 75 employees, 70, I think like more now, like 80 employees. We all hang out on the discord. Um, it's not our main chat, but it's our main outside of work chat and we're all hanging out. Um, yeah, here we go. So come to, Can you guys see that? No, oh, you guys can barely see. Go to trust a sec. Actually, let me bring it up here. And I, I'm tell you right now, um, like human, like people that are not security who, who like are outside of security in trust a sec that might have more knowledge on the hiring process do hang out on our discord. So take that for what it is. There's people that are not just security from TrustSec that hang out on Discord that could give you more insight than I can. But let me bring up the website. 
that points to our Discord real quick. Here we go. Yes, we have happy hours. What's the address? So if you just type in trust a sec in Discord, discord.com invite trust a sec. There we go. That's all it is. Discord.com forward slash invite forward slash trust a sec. And you're in there. Um, and then come hang out on the Discord. Uh, we have a Slack channel as well, but I like Discord better. I'm a big kid, so I, I like all the interact interaction, streaming, gifts, memes. So, and I, I was a gamer in my past life, so Discord is is comfortable for me. But we also have a Slack as well for more professional environment, right? Um, no memes <laughs> that I know of in Slack. You want memes? Go to Discord. Want to hang out, have fun, talk about everything. Want to talk about like professional stuff? I would say go to Slack. Uh, Slack Discord. Let's see here. Already there. Most importantly, start playing RPGs. <laughs> there we go. Thank you for putting that in there. Uh, Hammerhead. Hammerhead. So, and and then uh, Renzek. Renzek. Ask, ask somebody on Discord about Visa. Because I'm not sure about that. So, and we have we have uh, people that live overseas that are currently employed at TrustedSec. So they might be able to help as well. I know, hit up David Boyd. David Boyd streams a lot. He's a gamer as well. Um, j just tweet at him, or not tweet, uh, at him in Discord, David Boyd, and he'll be able to give you an answer. He's awesome. He's the one who put me on Streamlabs um, to do this. So actually, I should blame David Boyd for putting me on Streamlabs because it crashed on me like three times. But he, he, he lives overseas. I believe David Boyd, or I might have that wrong. Cool. Uh, any other questions so far? And I think I'm going to do the demo uh, in a video and upload it uh, for the timeline, MFT, just just to, to save time. All right. Cool. Cool. And this is, uh, so this was just an introduction, kind of like a filler. Uh, I never streamed from Twitch before. I never used Streamlabs, OBS. So this was a streamer, uh, filler, right? Uh, been on the lookout for more. Uh, and I'm CyberGhostPsyops on Twitter. Um, if you can tell me what that's from, you m might get some swag. Who, who can tell me what is Cyber Go Psyops? My CyberGo. It's a reference. If somebody can tell me what CyberGo Psyops is from, I think there's some swag in, in your future. Oh, the chat disappeared. Alrighty. So I, I think uh, if you just tweet at me, uh, CyberGo PsyOps, and tell me what that's from. And I'll send you some swag, some stickers. Uh, I'll talk to TrustedSec about uh, anything more. The man's there are goats. There you go. You Google that, huh, Trevor? Be honest. Did you Google that? <laughs> so Trevor got it right. Hey Trevor, uh, tweet tweet at me or at Trust a Sec. Um, and then we'll DM and we'll try to get try to get you some swag. I got swag here. Uh, you can see my background. I got stickers and and you know some some swag. Sorry for my background, but yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Cyber Gold PsyOps is from uh, The Master at Goats. Um, it's like a George Clooney movie. But it's actually the unit I come from. So that was my job in Army. We didn't we didn't mind kill goats or anything like that. That's, you know, maybe they did in the 80s. I don't know. But I didn't. <laughs> so, cool. So Trevor W. Uh, tweet at TrustedSec or myself, Cyber Cyber Goku PsyOps, and we'll get you some swag. Cool, man. I appreciate the 43 people that came. And sorry for the technical difficulties. Uh, please hit up TrustedSec. Please hit up the Discord. 
there is job positions available. Uh, look, go to the website and look. Uh, we are hiring. Um, we're growing like crazy. Uh, we need help. So Le- LeBron's the real goat. <laughs> I don't know who's putting that. So Dave Kennedy is a big LeBron fan, but I don't think he's on the Twitch trust. He might be. He might be. It might be Dave Kennedy. He's a big LeBron fan. Uh, I'm a big LeBron fan just because I'm a Lakers fan. So inherently, you know, by by rules of of a hometown fandom, LeBron is like the like the goat now. Before that was Kobe, right? <laughs> and then before that was Magic. Never Jordan. Uh, so now it's LeBron. So cool. All right. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate it. Uh, first game of NBA Finals is tonight. Game one. Nobody cares about that. Except me and, and Dave Kennedy. <laughs> uh, just a few people. And then, um, yeah, uh, I'll, we'll figure this out. We'll figure this out and make it better in upcoming days or next week. Cool. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate it. This is an intro. This is a filler. More in-depth discussion going on in a few days, up to a week. Cool. Thank you, everyone. Cyber go out.